Welcome to another episode of the Streamy Award-winning podcast, Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Ann Helbig, and I'm very excited to have Nolan Gould on this episode. He is, uh, I mean, you know him from Modern Family. You might not know him from social media because he doesn't really actively participate in it. He's one of those, like, healthy humans that has a life outside the internet uh but we have to learn a lot about that life in this episode he loves to rock climb he's an actual genius um so watch this really smart well-adjusted young successful person make me feel wonderfully inadequate this whole episode of not too deep enjoy Here we this go. Is, this is my son. This oh, is your... <laughs> they have, you know, interview. yeah, they have therapy pets. This is your your therapy pet. And it got even worse when I looked at the face. Yeah, like, I don't make direct yet. eye contact with it. Um, <laughs> but this baby somehow has been in front of a um, a, a a medium that uh, was checking a bunch of dolls that were like uh, supposedly haunted. Uh-huh. Um, and they, we threw this baby in the mix of them. And <laughs> the guy said, uh, he called out all the other dolls that were haunted and said that this one has seen only good fun times. So this oh. one is not haunted and is not dangerous. So oh, yeah. I trust that person. They might also have I, just been a fan of your podcast. And uh, seen it before. I'd, uh, well, I literally was like, this is a risk throwing this have in. You, Cause if they tell me that this doll is haunted, it is going in a dumpster somewhere. Have you seen a, do you watch like um john oliver yes john oliver had a a, a bit about uh mediums oh really season. i yeah. haven't seen that bit no um, yeah it's awesome really he just, he just brings down why out. they're like the worst people in the oh world. Yeah. yeah there's also um the amazing randy have you seen that documentary no it's this guy that literally like has dedicated his whole life to like calling out people on their like magic bullshit and like mm. psych um whatever psychic medium kind of bullshit yeah. and it's pretty great yeah, um, highly recommend if you're into documentaries. Yeah, I, I am, also, especially documentaries that make other people look bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just it makes it makes me feel good on the uh, inside. I mean, Chicken um, People. I'll recommend that one. That one's really good. It's about people that compete have competitive chicken competitions, like okay. like dog shows, but for chicken. Oh, it's like a, like a 4-H kind yep, of thing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, and the chickens, you know, fairly are beautiful. Like they are really gorgeously Some sexy, sexy chickens. Sexy chickens. <laughs> I think was the first title of the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> they switch. Cool. Cool. Um, I hope you guys are running record on We're already that, rolling. We're in it now. Nolan, thank you for being here. Oh, I, we actually are. Yeah, in it. yeah, oh, we're cool. actually in it. It's a <laughs> I very, hope you include that bit. It's a very uh, casual uh, podcast. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Of course. You're a busy, busy boy. Yeah, yeah. Although not right now. We're on uh, we're uh, on season break between season 10 and 11. Okay. So uh, I'm does, unemployed right now. I actually brought Fun? some resumes if you want to pass it out <laughs> to people. Uh, currently looking for employment. Uh, no, it feels, uh, it feels good. We work really hard for eight months yeah. straight to bring... Um, to bring comedy to yeah. the peoples of the world. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's nice to get a, a little bit of a break. What do you, well, the one thing I saw when I was, like I said before, stalking your social media, yep. um, you do a lot of rock climbing and things like that in your free time. Yeah. How did that start? Um, How did that start? Oh, this is, uh, me and my friend were really into like a Netflix show called like Ultimate Beastmaster. <laughs> 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 okay. And if you, if you haven't- What is this? <laughs> If you haven't watched it, it's wonderful. Okay. It's just, it really is. It's like people from like eight different countries and they're like, they out, they have hosts for like each different country and uh-huh. um, they're like cheering on like uh, them as they basically run uh, like an American Ninja Warrior co- uh, course, but like okay. I'm writing this down. Steroids. Ultimate Beast. Ultimate Beast Master. Okay. It's just so silly. And the people that always win that competition are rock climbers. Really? Uh, yeah. Because they just have like, you know, amazing arm strength and like control. Um, they were like beating out, you know, martial artists and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. my friend were like, yo, if we ever want to run the ultimate beast master course, <laughs> which I'm like highly considering, uh, okay. as an option in my life, okay. uh, we've got to become rock climbers. Okay. And then watching like the, a big string of movies that came out about rock climbing, like free solo. Yeah. I haven't seen um, that yet. I hear it's, it's amazing. Awesome. Free solo is great. There's also one called the Dawn wall. Okay. Um, both, both really great. And that just kind of further cemented us into, uh, rock climbing. And so that's how you started with the goal of becoming of, the ultimate of beast becoming the warrior. ultimate beast master. Yeah. <laughs> master, yeah. <laughs> that's what do they win on that show? Uh, pride, I th- joy. Yeah, I yeah. Th- I think yeah, you win you win a, like a monetary prize, but like then oh. you get to like put like 
Beast Slayer in front of your name, as far as I'm concerned. Like, my Twitter handle is getting changed to, like, at Beast Slayer Nolan. If you ever tweet. <laughs> yeah, if I ever if tweet. If you ever tweet. It's which, been a minute. Um, what's your relationship? Well, because, okay, you started, this is my deep dive, not so deep, pretty shallow, uh, dive of, you started a separate Instagram that's specifically for your rock climbing endeavors. Yeah. yeah. What is your relationship with Instagram as a whole? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just <laughs> phonetically it's, spell out my yeah. side right there and you'll get the idea. It's um, I've got like a, a weird relationship with Instagram. Obviously, like I I kind of need it because mm-hmm. that's just where the industry is going right now. You kind sure. of have to have like followers and stuff like that. But I don't have besides my new um, Instagram account, which is I'm totally going to uh, plug it right now. Please do. It's the only only form of social media I enjoy. It's called Free Nolo. Mm-hmm. A lot like Free Solo. But um, yeah, that's the, if it wasn't for that, like I wouldn't I don't have personal social media. Gotcha. Like I'm not on Facebook because like they steal my information and like sell it yep. to the Russians. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going political immediately. Uh, <laughs> we're getting too deep right yeah. now. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just I'm not on social media. It's it's so hard for me. I don't get it. Yeah. Really? No, yeah, I just like I Do you I, follow is there anyone that you follow on social media or that you look at on social media, or is it just kind of like a, a vacuum? Uh I do for like mindless like entertainment. Yeah. Um, although I do follow like social media can be cool. Like I follow like Nat Geo and stuff like oh, that. Oh, you're a good human. I follow I follow like a <laughs> lot of um, you know, like charities and stuff. Um You don't follow like any French bulldogs or anything no, like that. I, I, no, I don't, you're missing I don't out, follow man. any dog accounts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like Instagram can go either way. It can be Mm -hmm. like really, you can do good things or it can, you know, obviously do bad things. Well, I just learned, we just had someone on that was telling me that they started doing favorites or I didn't even know you could do this on Instagram where you can like save people's posts. And then when they feel like bad about the world and about like social media, they just go to their personal favorites page and it's just flooded with all of like their actual, it's like a Pinterest page basically, but on Instagram. And I was like, yeah, that's the better way to use social media than to just yeah. get sucked into like now I'm like in year 2015 on some random Instagram model that I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know how I got here. Yeah, I just I if I do go on like social media, I have to stay very far away from uh, the direct messages. Oh, yes. Yes. Those, that's a that's a dark place. Yeah. Things like change very rapidly. Like when I hit like 19 or 20. Yeah. Like the the direct messages, the content that was in there changed really quickly. Yeah, I'm sure that the the, um, <laughs> the <laughs> intention of the messages uh, had a different meaning yeah. in those uh, formative Sometimes, years. Like, I don't I always fall for it too. It'll be like this person sent you a photo and I'm like, I don't it, you can't see it until you press allow. So I'm like, hey, maybe Careful. it's like, maybe it's because sometimes like people will send me like photos of a dog and that makes yeah. me happy. Or like nope. a video of them rock climbing. I'll be like, I wonder what this is. And I'll think, oh, oh, oh. Cannot unsee. <laughs> Cannot unsee. Also, I learned Not the again. hard way that people can see in those DMs if you screenshot. What they've sent you. Oh, really? What were you screenshotting? Um, a guy that I was, you know, having a situation with, uh, okay. like a romantic situation that got wasn't it. really going anywhere. And then I screenshotted the message and sent it to my friend. And the next message I got from him is, why did um, you screenshot this? And asking, I, asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, when, it, when it alerts them that you've screenshot, is it the the text or is it, it goes uh, or under, is it just photos they sent you? Uh, I think it's anything in the message that you've screenshot that, you know how you can see when something has been seen? It says yeah. scene underneath of it. I think it says like this has been screenshot. Well, that explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank God this dude immediately came back and was like, why did you screenshot this? And I like threw my phone out the window. Yeah, I was that, like, ah, oh, that no. fixes it. <laughs> yeah. If I don't look at it, that means he's never looked at it either. Yeah. All yeah. good. Oh boy. Um, so what do you do you do? Is rock climbing kind of your like go-to in like your hiatus time? Uh yeah, I mean, very, very recently, yeah. Although I've been getting just like um, super, super messed up from rock climbing. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I tore like a ligament in my ankle and uh, like broke a rib. Oh, shit. Not from rock climbing, but um, it, you know, has has been affecting that. It's just rock climbing is such a good like. It's a know, mental game. It, it is. It's both physical and like mental because you're solving a puzzle. And yeah. I also like, I love being in nature. Mm-hmm. Like nature is my yeah, favorite you, thing. You travel a lot. I do. Yeah. But it's also really difficult for me to, um, especially living in Los Angeles, which is just kind of like a concrete like jungle yep. surrounding you for like miles. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to get like the motivation to get outside. And like, I don't want to go like hike like Runyon Canyon, right. which is 
a hiking trail in LA that's basically like a paved path. Yeah, yeah. Um, so rock climbing is always like a really good excuse to like drive out to a national park and just like be outside mm-hmm. doing something. Yeah, because weren't you just in the Grand Canyon? Yeah, it was just in the Grand Canyon actually with my uh, my TV dad, Ty Burrell. Oh, yeah, uh, you guys a, traveled together? Yeah, on a rafting, uh, that's really father-son cute. rafting trip. <laughs> really? Yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no, I did see a video of you getting wait, like pulled out of the water by did, him or something. I just got a text from him last night about it. <laughs> Which, by the way, the fact that me and Ty Burrell like text, like, yeah. it, it 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 makes me happy. It's very silly I to love, hear. I love yeah. texting with Phil Dunphy. He said, "Hey, <laughs> hey, young man, how are you? Remember when we almost died in the Grand Canyon together?" <laughs> <laughs> Wait, talk me through this. What happened? Because you, uh, it looked intense. Were you wearing a body camera? Uh, yeah, I was wearing I was wearing a GoPro. Yeah, and um, yeah, I I kind of just they had like inflatable kayaks. And inflatable day, Inflatable, kayaks? yeah. It's just like a, a rubber kayak that's okay. like filled with air. Mm-hmm. And uh, I jumped in one day, and I had been uh, white water kayaking before, mm-hmm. um, yeah, but only in like class three, class four rapids. Okay. And these were class eight rapids. What's the and maximum class? I, I don't, uh, death. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So on, on a scale of one infinity. to death. Infinity, darkness, infinity. On a scale of one to like Niagara Falls. <laughs> Um, and I just hopped in and like, look, our river guides were awesome, but like, Uh they also like, they're, they've done it so many times that they can't give good advice. They're like, like, Hey, can you tell me how to get through this rap? And they're like, Oh yeah, man, there's going to be like a left facing (laughs) lateral and you're going to see like a big hole in the water. You're going to want to go to the right of the rock, but left of the hole. (laughs) And this means nothing to you when you're like literally a foot above the water and you can't see anything except for massive waves coming at you. Yeah. And we were on this one called house rock rapid, which is famous for being literally a house sized rock down at the bottom and when the water goes over this rock it creates like a big divot in the water a gigantic hole that was like 15 feet by 15 feet and you don't want to fall in there because that's like that that's that's the end yeah Uh, you you don't come out of there god and uh i was i was like looking around for this hole i'm like i don't see i don't see it i saw a big wave to my left i was like i'm gonna kind of go to the right of that and like as I went past it, I looked to my left and like I looked like seven <gasps> feet down into the water and saw like my life flash before my eyes. I was like, Ooh. "That's terrifying." Yeah. Yeah. Was there? What is the precursor for allowing you to have this inflatable raft? You just go. I've done this before. And they're like, "Here you go." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. They don't test any of your skill sets nope. or anything. Nope. None. None whatsoever. That's nuts. Yeah. Wait. So then you fell in. And I've, then I fell in a couple. And times. then your TV dad pulled you my, out. My TV dad pulled me out, <laughs> uh, and I guess I didn't realize I was down for like I got sucked down for like fifteen seconds. And that's horrifying. And apparently, um, Ty's wife uh, told me afterwards that like Ty just like he lost it in a way that like he literally like, like his son he watched his son and not even like a my son, yeah. my son just like he went like stone cold <gasps> and just like stared into the water oh <laughs> just, no yeah. yeah that was uh but i basically spent like the rest of the <sighs> trip being like a wet cat because like the water's like <laughs> the water's 52 degrees oh shit and i was down in it for like a minute and so i got out just like <laughs> just like i was like cranky i was like shivering <laughs> sputtering oh my god yeah. <laughs> but that's nuts now you guys have formed a deeper bond than you probably ever could have totally that yeah. so now you owe him one life saving i i i'm on it yeah it's I'm gonna, also like i'll be america's hero if i save tv's ty burrell oh my god i'm telling that to everyone <laughs> That's so sweet to hear that you guys actually just like hang out outside the show that you're not totally sick of each other. Yeah, I mean, well, it, I mean, we are a family in like every sense of the word because mm-hmm. we've spent 10 years together. So like there are moments where I'm like, get me away. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> like, you know, we are, we grew up together and mm-hmm. sometimes like, yeah, there you spend every day with these people. But at the same time, like you have a bond that's like so much uh, like, it's our describe. It's literally just a family. Yeah. Have you fully processed that the end is the end is coming? Winter is coming. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I guess <laughs> I can't do Game of Thrones spoilers for anybody that uh, might not have seen could. it. You could. People um, will see it, and I'm, if they get spoiled, uh, Luke, then Luke, stop listening to anything or watching anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. I. The funny thing is, I've never been able. Like even now, it seems so far away because our show has always been like such a like staple. Like it. We always have known it's coming back. Like, there's never never been, like, a doubt in our mind. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I think, like, season four, I was like, hey, just in case this, like, show ends, like, I better start, like, coming up with a plan of, like, what I want to do next. <laughs> yeah. And, like, season eight rolled around. I was like, I'll get it to it next <laughs> season. And now I know, like, it definitely has a deadline. I You're still like, have no idea what I'm going to do after. Yeah. I really procrastinated like, on yeah, this, like, exactly. other thing. Yeah, I should I've, be- had, I've had 11 years <laughs> to, like, get some kind of, like, semblance of a plan out. But... 
I don't know. Part of me still like always thinks like Martin Family is going to like get picked up by another network or there's going to be a spinoff <laughs> or something. Luke's going to be like 40 by the time the show yeah, ends. Yeah, there you go. Would you do a Luke spinoff? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're I mean, like, this, I have no this, other plans. This, I will do anything. <laughs> this probably doesn't help me like as far as like negotiating goes because mm-hmm. this can totally like be used against me by a network. <laughs> like, look how eager you were to be like if I tried to be like, hmm, I don't know. You'll have to make it worth we'll my while. We'll have to and negotiate. Like, we have you on video <laughs> saying uh, I will <laughs> that you have nothing do better to do. anything that yeah. anyone wants me to. We have the greatest job in the world. I, you know. Yeah, I must say, it, it, I mean, from like, I follow a lot of you guys on Instagram and mm-hmm. I've like worked with Sarah before and like it just seems like you guys are just genuinely like having a great time yeah that it doesn't it must not feel like work all day and you it's, guys all seem like genuinely kind humans that like care for each other and like well what you you're do. wrong oh today's the day <laughs> no. spoilers uh yeah I I think it's really difficult especially nowadays to find a community um in the industry that like what we have going on. Mm-hmm. I don't think you find it anymore because it's kind of the, like the end of the era of like long time running like family, like sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, and even like shows nowadays, especially like, um, you know, with everything that's going on with streaming, like shows just don't last longer anymore. And, you know, yeah, there's less of that. And I think because like modern family has always felt so secure that like it could kind of just be like, I don't know. It's just like our day job. Like we're not yeah. there like panicking, like guys, we got to like step it up or else right, we're going to get right, canceled. Right. We're just like, such a relaxed environment where we really get to go and just like, I don't know. It's awesome. It seems really great. And I think that's what resonates too, is that you guys all seem like genuinely like grateful for the work and like enjoy it. And that's like, you know, half the battle. Yeah. The other half is getting an audience. Really, really lucky. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the fan base like? Um, I, you know, I'm actually like still discovering like new things about the fan base all the time. I just found that like modern family has like a, a fan like wiki. Like, oh, really? uh, and like, the, it's always like, I couldn't find like the right word to describe it yesterday, but it was just like a, huh, from it for me. Like, <laughs> like, oh, people like watch this. Like they really like, people oh, are into this. Like we have like seasons. super fans who like, <laughs> I mean, cause like, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a big fan of like, I'm not a TV guy. Sure. So like, you know, when shows get big, I'm not like really aware of it. I've You're never not... been like part of that, like the crazy a office fandom. fans, yeah, or, like, the totally. friends people or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just like crazy to me, the idea that like our show has kind of become that to people. And they were literally people who like sit down, like write articles about every episode. Wow. And they wrote like an article, like describing my character, which of course I was like, that's not right. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like you know, you, 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 you think you... <laughs> you think he's just a jerk, but there's a lot more going on than you're aware of. <laughs> Like they wrote an article about me and I was actually, I was super happy about it because uh, yesterday I was looking for something to post on um, social media about our episode that's coming up Uh and I didn't, I didn't have any photos because I never take any photos. I never ask for them. I'm just, I'm really bad at it. Uh So I just Googled like modern family, new episode photos. (laughs) Wait, you Google image (laughs) search? I Google (laughs) image search to find something to post and Uh like, thank God for the super fans. I don't know how they find this stuff. Like. (laughs) Before me, like I feel like I should, I should have this. Before you should anybody, have these already in your camera. Yeah, roll. they're like they're talking about like storylines for like Luke next season. I'm like, how do you know this? They don't, they don't <laughs> even tell incredible. me this. Incredible. Yeah. So thanks. Shout out to the super fans. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And also, you'll never have to take a photo again. Oh no, it's just great. Just like, oh <laughs> yeah. Oh my 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 social media is now just becoming like a a, a re- becoming, reposting platform. Yeah, you're a yeah, fan I'm, account. I'm not doing of any the work. Fan accounts. I'm just gonna like I'm gonna um like hire on all of these super fans so like <laughs> yeah. i'm not gonna pay them because they're super fans they wouldn't do it for they won't even accept your yeah, money i'll just like i'll <laughs> tell them great job and thank you i'll so, like one of your photos if you write a caption for me <laughs> if you suddenly start becoming very active on social media <laughs> yeah. we know that it's completely outsourced yeah, you'll to know everyone why. else yeah. oh man okay i'm well, really not doing any wonders for my social media i don't think anybody's gonna be like hey i should go you know what that nolan kid seems really cool i'm gonna go give him a follow nope <laughs> not worth your time this is the psa for yeah. unfollow unfollow get it trending oh i love it okay uh, we're gonna take a quick break when we get back okay. i gotta talk to you about go-karting as pikachu and um you know your other travel endeavors so we'll be right awesome. back with more not too deep this episode of not too deep is supported 
you will understand that pun in a second, by one of my favorite companies, Third Love. With more than 70 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes, Third Love designs bras with breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. You just answer a few simple questions via Third Love's Fit Finder quiz to find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. And then thanks to Third Love's 100% fit guarantee, you can wear, wash, and put your bra to the test for 60 days. I'm talking about two months, people. And if you don't love it, you can return it and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. This is hands down the most comfortable bra that you will ever own. They have straps that don't slip. They have tagless labels. They're lightweight, super thin, memory foam cups. It's all wonderful. And you're hearing this straight from the mouth of a girl that lives resides, thrives in only sports bras for the majority of her life. And these bras are exceptionally comfortable. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering you beautiful listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash grace. Now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash grace for 15% off today. I can send <laughs> gifts or gifs of myself to people. Yes, you and that's can. just like that was like that was such like a novel thing. I'm like, I got gifted. <laughs> Some nerd out there took time to like gif me. To be fair, you've probably been gifed for the last ten years. Yeah, I've just never and known a whole it. Backlog it just of makes it. me think of like what else I'm missing out there. Oh, I'm sure there's like, a lot there's of like modern family like memes fan and stuff. fiction. Do you know what fan fiction? I, you know, I actually have read the modern family fiction uh fan fiction you and have? uh I've written some of it myself. Uh no. <laughs> It's uh, it's as horrifying as you would think. Yeah, I'm sure it gets uh, into some dark alleys uh, of the mind that you don't want to uh, entertain at that point. Um, I don't want to go too deep into it, but there's uh, the my least favorite one I ever found was called uh, Family Fun. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! 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 Veto! Veto! <laughs> no, there's um. Feel free to cut that out. Oh no, that's in. Uh, yeah, I've read fanfics of my friends and I where I've gotten my best friend pregnant and then like got shot. Well, or no, she's gotten me pregnant and then I've been shot with a gun and I die in her arms or something oh like that. Oh my god! Yeah, it gets pretty. I mean, it's there's creativity to it, but yeah. it's um, it's maybe too much creativity. <laughs> I want to say. Um, okay, let's talk about Tokyo. You were just in Tokyo. Yeah. You go karted around dressed as Pikachu. I did. Oh my god! And I was a <laughs> I was a bigger celebrity dressed up as Pikachu than I was just myself. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, like me, me and my best friend, uh, we went to this place. It's called like, uh, it's yeah. You you go kart around Tokyo and these and you dress up in these outfits and it's wait, as you suppo- awesome did, as it sounds. Did you decide to dress up in the outfits or the go kart provides they, they, the outfit? They, yeah, they have a bunch of different outfits. Oh, and okay. both me and my friend were like, I'm I'm gonna. I was like, I'm gonna be Pikachu. And he's like, I'm gonna be Pikachu. <laughs> And like neither of us would budge, so we both went as Pikachu, and like us together, absolutely killed it in Tokyo. Uh. People like we literally at one point stopped to like get out and walk around, and like for fifteen minutes straight, you were think would think like we're outside of like Grauman's Chinese Theater, where like all the people dressed up as you know like Johnny Depp impersonators and stuff are getting (laughs) photos taken. That was us. So you could have technically yeah. charged for I I could have, and no, it was like probably one of the highlights of my life was riding around. um, in a freaking go kart, yeah, through the streets of Tokyo, just yelling How "pika you- pika" at people, and like, <laughs> like, yeah, it was awesome. That's amazing. Uh, where else have you traveled? I feel like, I mean, you probably that must be instead of using social media, you actually use it to go see the world with your eyeballs. Yeah, I, I, I see, I see it with my eyeballs. And yeah, I hear it with my my ear holes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I've been a lot of places. I think I'm at like. 25 countries and counting wow. um yeah i've, I've the, seen a lot of stuff what's your short list of where you want to go short list of where i want to go oh god there's it's such a long list i'm sure um da, 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 da. um i really want to go to uh nepal oh i've never been yeah nepal and um butan uh yeah, like the kind of Himalayan countries. Cool. Um, yeah, where else? I'm a, I'm a huge scuba diver, so um, oh nice. Anywhere there, I'm oh uh, I'm going to Indonesia next year to like live on a boat for a week what? and go diving, and then they drop you off on this island that's really cool. That um, it's okay. I'm just giving you so many recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is now called, becoming it's called, it, from this uh, documentary called Racing Extinction, and basically they found this uh, little island that was hunting manta rays and selling their fins to. 
uh, China for like the uh, black market fin trade. Uh And they convince all of the locals to stop hunting um, the manta rays. And now instead they all work as park rangers and they protect the manta rays. And uh, you can go and stay on a resort there. And it's the only resort in the world where building it actually increased biodiversity in the area. Wow. Um, So you get to go and like, I don't know, go stay on a private island, but also like support like, you know, environmentalism and like these people to make sure that they don't go back to like hunting manta rays. And that's incredible. It's really awesome. That's super cool. What a great recommendation. Yeah. And you, you're going there next year. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, put it on the gram so we find out about it. <laughs> I will. Okay. Free Nola. <laughs> um, okay. You were on Worst Cooks in America. Oh, boy. How is that? <laughs> How is that? <laughs> it was, uh, oh, man. I, uh, I've i got like, I literally, I think I still have a scar on my finger from accidentally <laughs> cutting it open with a knife. Uh, I really am a terrible, terrible cook. Um, like and that, did this that come to no you? Joke this opportunity or did you see yeah, they, they had you know what they had heard of my prowess okay. it was it was <laughs> known your... across the land that i was the worst <laughs> cook in america and uh surprisingly like it's it's a competition show and the competition i found out later on was not to be the worst cook in america <laughs> <laughs> you you lose if you're the worst cook in america this was so like, falsely the name's advertised a little to me. weird i was like oh I've, i got this i'm gonna nail this uh and no you, like you, the goal is to start really bad and then like like improve okay and that uh that did not happen <laughs> who yeah. did you compete I, I, against i lost on um pizza <laughs> like how do you lose on pizza i don't because pizza is um, meant to be bought and not made yeah exactly yeah <laughs> pizza is meant to get delivered yeah um i who did i uh who else was on there it was um uh latoya jackson yeah. um uh, Oscar Nunez, um, who plays Oscar from The Office. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Ian Ian Ziering. I think I'm oh yeah, right. yeah. From, from 90210 and Sharknado. And Sharknado. I know it from because <laughs> yeah. I'm a I'm a baby and I didn't right. see 90210. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, his name looks like it should be Ian, but it's Ian. Ian. Yeah, Ian something Ziering. like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's fun. So you took away no new skill sets. Uh, no, none so ever. No one so ever. <laughs> I uh, I recently learned how to use a crock pot. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, Set it is, and forget I'm it. I'm just like, I am the king of like single dude living right now. <laughs> You're just a consummate just bachelor. Like, I just bought like a whole bunch of peanut butter because that's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> because like you, you, you grab a jar of peanut butter, you got a spoon. There's no mess. But also. And it keeps you fed. <laughs> keeps you going. <laughs> I mean, you should have a lifestyle brand. I don't this know why actually, you don't. I don't know why I don't have a cooking show. Exactly. Single, single dude cooking. Uh. I'll just teach you how to like really spice up that like instant ramen. <laughs> Do you still, you lived with your brother? Uh, my, okay. This okay. is, um, talk this, us through this. My brother lives with me. Okay. And this is a, it's a very small distinction, but it's, it's what keeps it's everything together. Yeah, it keeps, yeah. it, it's, you know, it stops like our house from devolving into like primal, like, uh, madness. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how long has this been happening? Uh, this has been uh, two, two and a half years. Okay. I think. Yeah. Have you guys um, settled on like house rules? Uh, yeah. Our house rules are like, uh, God, they're so weird. They're just like, <laughs> like they, they all have like a weird story where you're like, oh, Please, give like, us why, one. like, why is Sunny D banned? <laughs> <laughs> um, actual genuine question. Why is Why it is Sunny D banned? I don't know. Because like <laughs> when we first moved out, like I went like straight to like kind of like um, a narcissistic dictator. Okay. Like I was like, this is my house, my rules. And like I banned Sunny D because like me and my brother went shopping because we didn't have any food in the house. And he, we had, he wanted to get Sunny D. And I was like, no, d- d- get orange juice because I'm not going to drink Sunny D. It's like, uh-huh. it's gross. What is it? It's not orange juice. <laughs> Who was orange juice? They'd say orange juice. He's like, I want Sunny D. And I just banned Sunny D on this spot. <laughs> And like the first of like many like you just uh, drunk with power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh are you have you and your brother been close growing up? Um here and there, uh we uh we're really close in age. We're like 14 months apart. Okay. Um and we had like a, a, a pretty big sibling rivalry thing, I think, growing up. Okay. But like on a massive scale. <laughs> like because both me and him uh, were members of Menza, which is like yeah. a, a high IQ society. So like So you're both members of it. We're both members of Menza. Oh, and okay, God, so that must check have this. fucked with your he, parents I, so hard. Yeah. He, he went and got <laughs> if I had two kids and they were both in Menza, I'd be like, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> they are smarter than me. <laughs> so my, my brother went and did an IQ test and got 149. Okay. I went and got an IQ test and got 150. <laughs> This jerk went back and retested. I don't know how he can get retested and got 151. 
I, so it's just we're like like one upping each other, and uh, then like it just continued on to like the, the you know like oh I'm on an Emmy award winning TV show. <laughs> He's like, well, I graduated high school at thirteen. <laughs> Yeah, the most academic um, fights of all yeah, time, we, we, like we, the most we, unrelatable we never, fights. We, we, we never, yeah, we never beat each other up. We just had like brain battles. Yeah, we we're just like no, 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 like <laughs> each other, like brain waves at each other. Have you gone back and retaken the <clears> test? <throat> I did. I uh, like I um, deteriorated three points. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, but it was like off of like a pocket IQ test that someone bought me for my like birthday or something. So how do you eh. get into men's? Like you take the test, and then is there like a welcoming ceremony? Uh, yeah, you know, um, actually, Professor X finds you with his <laughs> with his like his. Uh, I got the nerds are gonna hate me. I can't remember. Oh, Cerebro, that's the chamber he sits in. And he's yeah, like, yeah. there's another one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know how, but yeah, you, you take the test. You and, didn't have any sort of, and like, then you get to join the super secret club. Yeah, you get like a certificate uh, and, in the and, mail or yeah, something. Yeah, and then you all sit around and you uh, plot like the destruction of the world. Worth saving it. Um, I mean, you guys are the ones I trust to like, save it. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's really not like that. At least for, uh, for kids, it was a lot of like hanging out and like. Do you playing Dungeons go, and Dragons. And you like, guys actually go and you meet with each other. Uh, yeah, I don't I, know how it works at all, obviously. I've yeah. not been invited to this no, club. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a really cool resource um, for, like, yeah, like, really smart kids who, like, have trouble fitting in. Okay. Um, but there, there were a few moments where, I like, I was like, I got to get out of here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much for like, me to handle I was right like, now. I'm smart, but I'm on, like, the lower spectrum of smart where I can still kind of, like, seamlessly blend in with people. yeah. <laughs> I remember like watching a kid get up uh, in front of all of us for like show and tell as he proceeded to name off every font in the world. <laughs> he was like Cambria, Calibri, Times, Times New Roman. I was like, get me out, man. <laughs> and that was like your school's talent <laughs> was, like, show. Like I'm gonna die here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall for that. Yeah. I'd be like, keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. It went on for like five Get minutes. Get the fucking comic sans. Um, I gotta hear this. Yeah. By the way, it makes no sense, but that kid is an absolute player right now. <laughs> that, <laughs> that really came in handy in high school did when you? all of the girls just, you know, who would have thought that millennials just love fonts? They, but he was ahead of his time. He knew what he was preparing for. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys still keep in touch? Me and anybody from that yeah. world? No. No. <laughs> like, no. I've shut that door. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I just, I actually feel like I kind of like have just been purposely like dumbing myself down. To, like, <laughs> like I don't want to remember life. that lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you talked about your brother and you guys, him living with you. What's your house aesthetic like? Um, trash. Okay. Just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> there's sure. just garbage everywhere. Like we don't, we're learning how to like take care of ourselves. Like That's I kind of jumped like straight into like the deep end of the swimming pool. Okay. Um, we're like, I moved out when I was 17 and like, didn't, didn't know how to cook, didn't know how to like clean mm -hmm. any of that stuff. So like, it's, it's been a process, like thankful for YouTube for like, you know, teach me how to like fix things around the house. And it's like, it's slowly, it's slowly yeah. getting there, but like. There was a while where, like, we didn't have, like, plates. We actually <laughs> just got plates uh, last year for my birthday. Uh, Ariel Winter, uh, my sister on the show, who is just, like, one of the best people in the world, uh -huh. uh, just bought me, like, an entire kitchen set. <laughs> She's like, like I cannot like, pots and see pans. you live like this. <laughs> yeah, and because, like, like, she came over for, like, a dinner party and we had, like, paper plates. And, like, <laughs> so, like, we didn't even have cups. We just drank from the faucet. <laughs> <laughs> like a cat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, so we're 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 very very slowly getting there. You're slowly evolving. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. And also, how kind of Ariel to <laughs> give to you? She's, she's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your? I mean, you were what ten when you started the show? Uh -huh. What was your first impression of everyone? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's also an impression from a ten year old. Too. Yeah. Well, it was funny. I knew Rico. Um, before Rico, he, he plays Manny. Mm -hmm. uh, we were actually in an acting class together. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and of course, if you go to that acting class's website, <sighs> we're the first two things that pop up. <laughs> you too could be a modern family, just like our two clients we got on. Oh, amazing. Um, so I'd already uh, knew Rico, and that was pretty awesome when we were going to, like, we'd see each other at, like, the callbacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that we both got it was really cool. Um I was I was like super intimidated by everybody. I remember um like at the first table read calling um Ty and Julie 
uh, Mr. Burrell and mm-hmm. Mrs. Bowen. Uh-huh. And they're like, you got to drop that right now. You <laughs> called them that? Yeah. They're like, they're like we're, not, we're not doing that. We're Ty and Julie. Um, oh, that's so, yeah, so it was, sweet. You know, it was being a 10-year-old walking into like a super adult world. But uh, so it was a little intimidated. But man, super lucky that like everyone on like the set are just like everyone's kind. Yeah. Yeah. Such good people and really like looked out. For the kids growing up. Yeah. I mean, it's nuts that you spent 10 years of your life on this set. Well, yeah. And it's also nuts that, like, you know, we, I I actually did a count recently of how many, like, kids we've had on the show because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've added, like, some as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, yeah, we've had a lot, and the fact that none of them have gone like Lindsay Lohan yet is like really <laughs> impressive because like the, the odds are like stacked against yeah, us, yeah, you know, are, know, as young actors. So that's I'm like talking to you and hearing that you're just like a normal person that likes to be outdoors and doesn't yeah. isn't like chained to your social media at all. I'm like, yeah. this is refreshing and wonderful. I mean, I just like I'm starting to like feel old. Like not to go back to the social media thing, but I went mm-hmm. on like social media recently, and I was like, I was looking at this account, and it was just like all oh, interviews with like these young like Vine stars. And, like, yeah. Instagrammers and I didn't like I didn't get it like <laughs> one of them was like wearing like like a Gucci backpack like frontwards yeah. so you could like I was like there's clearly like nothing in there I, I swear to god the kid had like diamond braces on like it was a grill but it was also braces and I was just like what the hell am I looking at god. like this is like I, like is this gonna be the rest of my life just feeling old like I just like I felt tired and I wanted to like sit down uh, we were and, late on such a deep level yeah I'm just like well, I, what are these freaking creatures I'm looking at? Where do they crawl out from under? Like, where are their parents? Go to school. <laughs> oh, man. I want you to just follow me around and comment on social media <laughs> near me all the time because those are the exact identical thoughts I have. Yeah. But I'm a 33-year-old I'm really woman, lucky. So. Like, I got to, like, kind of grow up in, like, the last segment of society that's going to grow up, turn out to be cool. As far as I, I'm concerned, I, I, yeah, like you look maybe. at like these like um like these seven year olds who like know how to like use uh, like social media and like iPads mm-hmm. better than I do. Like yeah. I grew up in um Phoenix City, uh, Alabama. Okay. Um, and like uh, like I don't know, I like I ran around barefoot. I was like a little. Yeah. You like, were an actual sh- child. I was, like, a little, like, yeah, <laughs> wild child who like played in like streams and stuff. And like our first computer was like a Windows two. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure they already had like a higher Windows at that point. But like we learned like the only games I ever played were like weird like math games and stuff. Oh wow. Um, so like I don't know. But wait, so okay, normal. so if that's how you grew up. How did you transition into acting and getting into that world? Uh, that um, well, we actually started acting out and um. Of Phoenix City, Alabama, and believe it or not, uh, not a huge uh, acting capital of the world. It does not go Shocking. Los Angeles, New York, Phoenix City, <laughs> Alabama. And uh, we kind of just started a community theater out there. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a very Southern thing. I can't say theater. Theater. Like it, it doesn't. It, it boggles my theater? mind. I have to say theater. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I still have like a little bit of a Southern you accent. Got that like, creep in sometimes. But uh, yeah, my brother and me, who were super advanced, uh, my mom enrolled us in like a uh, community theater okay. program <laughs> and uh and this is funny uh the, my first role ever was um you remember like a box card children box yeah. card children mm-hmm. um like there was a dog called watch okay. and i that was my first role ever but i didn't <laughs> even play a dog <laughs> i didn't even get the character of watch all to myself i had to split part half the time with another kid <laughs> and we like trade out the outfit backstage uh that's very and here funny. i am now wow uh, yeah everyone then, starts somewhere yeah. stars they're just like us started from the bottom now we're here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, speaking of music, uh, the Logic music video. Mm. That's nuts. How did yeah, that come about? Um, super last minute, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, I got like a call from my manager like, hey, do you want to like go be in a Logic music video? And I was like, uh, yeah. And she was like, <laughs> cool, it's in an hour. I was like, oh my God. Wait, you got a call like uh, day of? Yeah, day of. And I had never, I had never heard that song before. Um, yeah. I was only... Uh, doing it because I'm a big Khalid fan. Mm-hmm. Then I heard Khalid was in the music video and I just want to meet Khalid. I still have it. <laughs> and then I did it because like I was hoping like I could meet Khalid. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because I just feel like we'd get each other, you know? <laughs> like I feel I feel like like Khalid just needs like like a real guy to like sit him down and be like, nah man, like you don't gotta worry about all these like crazy like You're gonna life coach all, Khalid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, just like he's got too many yes men in his life. And so he just needs like a real guy you to just be like real raw nah, dude, you don't you don't have to like worry about all these rap politics and stuff. I got you, man. <laughs> Just hang out, let's play some video games, climb some rocks. Well, he's an obsessive um, fan of the podcast, so I'm sure he'll hear this episode. Don't worry. Awesome. Get it in his hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, I went and uh, did this uh, 
this music video and the song is about the um, suicide hotline mm-hmm. and suicide prevention. And um, it's really crazy because I think now it's at like 300 million views or something. It's like 400 and we just were watching it. Really? Yeah, it's like 400 something. It's insane. Like, like, like that gives me anxiety. I mean, that's so that nuts. Just, ooh, well, and that's how crazy. You, it's so I many mean, people. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming that no one had any inklings that that was going to happen. No, I, I had no idea. Yeah. That's um, so nuts. And then like... I think they performed it at the Grammys and uh, everyone was like wearing t-shirts about like the hotline. Like Mm -hmm. um, I think like in the wake of that music video coming out, like the hotline, like um, percentage of calls went up like 40% or something. That's incredible. Which is really cool because like I I love acting, but I do kind of get this thing every once in a while where I'm like, it doesn't doesn't really feel like I'm doing anything like to like, you know, progress the world and stuff. So it was cool to do something that actually like had an effect other than just making people laugh. Yeah. No, Um, to have like a direct effect too. Yeah. That that's awesome. Well, very cool. Okay, we're gonna take one last break. When we get back, we got a whole bunch of Twitter questions for you. We'll be right back with more not too deep. Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. They offer licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues like depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. They connect you with professional counselors in a safe and private online environment. You can get help at your own time, at your own place, and anything you share is confidential. It's convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and or text with your therapist. And if for some reason you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. And best of all, it's affordable and not too deep with Grace Helbig listeners. Get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So get started by going to betterhelp.com slash grace, fill out a questionnaire, and that will help them assess your needs and match you with a counselor that you'll hopefully love. That's betterhelp.com slash grace, discount code grace. Um, okay, but before we get into the Twitter questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every single guest that is okay. on the podcast. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Cold spaghetti at? Yes. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to think of like wording this in a way where like maybe the guy, like whoever wants to get hit by cold spaghetti. Uh huh. Like maybe it's someone who like really loves spaghetti. But secretly, it's their fetish <laughs> or something. Um, oh man. Like, so like a, a bad person that I don't like. You, the intention behind the throw is entirely up to you. So okay. it can be celebratory. Can I, okay. Can it be like a certain uh, place in time? It can be okay. anything you want. I want to go back and throw cold spaghetti on my face uh, when I was like a little kid. <laughs> On yourself? Yeah, I don't. I don't I, know why, but I just like <laughs> thinking about it. Like, like going back in time, I'm like, "Hi, it's me from the future. Eat this freaking spaghetti." <laughs> just like it's it awesome. It would like, change I, the course of your life. Like I was a little, yeah, I was a little brat. Maybe I need to get hit in the face with cold spaghetti. All right, it would maybe turn out to be a better person. That's a very um, oddly like humble uh, answer to that yeah. question. <laughs> Um, okay, the other question that every guest gets asked is to tell us your worst. That's an amazing question, by the way. I it's like that very that's fun. on the, the list. It's, of you things. learn a lot about people and, you know, their relationships with other people. Yeah. Um, and this question is also very informative. Uh, please tell us your worst pants shitting story or a close call, but, <laughs> but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So mine is college jogging front lawn. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Halloween. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Eight years old is gonna count as one. Yep, eight, I can count uh, as Halloween, one. Halloween. Eight years old. Um, gorilla costume. <laughs> 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 At least the gorilla costume. I feel like there's like a also can I add, like adds a uh, uh-huh. postscript running and crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, there's got to be worse costumes that you could have been wearing for that experience. So. Is there? Is there? It's zipped up from the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no good. That's the exit strategy on that is a little uh, cumbersome to say the least. <laughs> okay, let's get into these Twitter questions for you. Um, someone wants to know what is the superior ice cream flavor? It's a superior ice cream flavor. Man, this is like, this is the most 
boring question to ask me <laughs> just because my answer is vanilla. Oh, it's wow. It's such a, a classic. vanilla answer. What's but, your, um, what's your just, go-to I, vice? My go-to vice? Yeah, like sweets, snacks. What's oh, your... I'm a I'm a salty guy all the way. Like okay. popcorn. Like oh man, like, really? I, I don't care like what kind of popcorn. Like I'll like save like the big large bucket <laughs> and like eat it throughout the, the next three days. Oh wow, yeah, okay. I don't mess around. Also like Seven Eleven pizza. Oh yeah. Like sitting under like a heat lamp. Yeah, I got really close to buying a Seven Eleven hot dog yesterday. Oh god. Yeah, that's, that's how I realized I might that's, be. That's where I draw one. Like that and like the, <laughs> like the like the um like the spicy buffalo rollers. Oh yeah. yeah. They're they're tough. They're mesmerizing, but <laughs> they are not good on the digestion. Yeah. Um someone wants to know, do you prefer bouldering or rock climbing? Oh, awesome. Um, what's the difference for someone? I don't yeah, really bold, know. Th- bouldering is I, like, I'm probably going to get skewered by the nerds on the internet. Sure. Um, but like to my knowledge, bold, bouldering is just like, uh, you le- you do it without ropes. Oh, and you that's do like the it, free... But you don't, you don't climb very high. You climb like, I think it's more know, like up sideways. to like 25 feet. Okay. Uh, and the goal is like, you know, get up and over the rock and you do have, if you're smart, you have a pad beneath you. Mm-hmm. So I carry around a pad with me. Uh, and rock climbing, there's all kinds of different rock climbing is what I'm learning. There's like top rope, there's uh, trad climbing, there's sport climbing, there's Whoa. lead climbing, uh, aid cl- like all, all kinds of stuff. Um, I think I prefer, I think I prefer bouldering because it's, okay. uh, you typically have less space to climb mm-hmm. and the moves are harder. Oh, interesting. So whereas like rock climbing is like an endurance thing, like I climbed like all of this, like right. uh, the hardest parts of like rock climbing are just condensed onto like one boulder because it's all like fingertip yeah based right i have like i wish you guys could see it at home i have like gnarly hands yeah that looks nuts like weird like you're like you've been doing a lot of like gardening very intense gardening (laughs) gardening where like the the really aggressive gardening yeah um yeah because that's i've been told i'm very lanky like long limbs and that's yeah. like good for rock climbing yeah, no it really is but my i just have it kills my fingers anytime i've done it which is you know maybe two times okay, <laughs> and yeah. it's uh yeah it doesn't work it, out for it, me. it never gets better either um they also want to know what was the first instrument you learned and which is your favorite uh my fr- the first instrument i learned uh was just piano i okay. started playing piano when i was five um but i like Uh, proceeded to pick up like a bunch of really weird instruments after that okay like my idols when i was 12 years old was um (sighs) mumford and sons okay Uh, i just like i thought like i was like the heavy side i was like that's what an ideal man should be he should play (laughs) he should play the banjo and he should wear a vest and a Uh button-up and denim jeans all the time there are way worse idols at 12 years Uh, old for the ideal man (laughs) that that is true but um it like sent me on a really weird path of uh picking up instruments like i uh started playing the banjo and the sitar and the double bass cool Uh, and my my favorite to this day is still banjo very cool is there one that you haven't learned yet that you would want to oh that's a good question um it's been so long since i've I've picked up an instrument i kind of realized i'm not super musically inclined okay but uh if i could play one other i would probably say um the, it's called the theremin what's it's that like a, i've never ever, heard that it's like when whenever you it's in a lot of movie soundtracks especially like back in the day like um science fiction it's like the okay Ooh, it's like that, yeah <laughs> like when you see like a ufo flying yes. it's that and uh it's not used for much more than just that oh cool it's just yeah it's super it's super like you weird. can make every you, party you you really creepy you don't actually touch the instrument you just move your hands and it kind of senses where your hands are and makes what? different tones yeah really yep whoa okay i gotta youtube this that sounds nuts um, someone wants to know if you had to choose one all-time favorite Luke scenes from Modern Family, which would it be? Oh, oh man, there's so so many. I'm um, sure. There's an episode uh, <clears throat> where um, Joe gets christened, and we do a whole Godfather spoof. Mm. Uh, and uh, Luke is, is stays stays home because he's apparently sick, uh, and he like uh, gets out of bed and he's suddenly like in a complete suit and then he just goes on a rampage. And like, I, I remember at the time I really enjoyed it because I think I was like 13 years old and they let me like use a BB gun and like be a madman and like take a bat and like smash things. Yeah. That's so uh, cool. And I was like, I'm getting paid for this. This is nuts. Uh, yeah. I think that's still one of my favorite scenes. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, what's been the hardest scene or episode or. Oh, 
hardest scene or episode. I've got like there's so many mm-hmm. that are like embedded in my brain that yeah. I just like I like I keep down and like I only talk about them in therapy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this really brought up some stuff for me. Like, like remember uh... the time they like changed one word in a paragraph and then like once you got to that word, it just like your mind went blank. You couldn't do it. Um there's a lot of those. Um but yeah, uh, n- not like any that like particularly jump out yeah but, you yeah, know, yeah like remember the good times stay in the positive yeah yeah <laughs> exactly but yeah th- there's been a few where like i just like i couldn't get it right and like everyone's so like sweet on the show but i'm very like i'm a little neurotic as an actor i think sure. you, are, you have to be as like a young actor on a set of like professionals and stuff just, when like, you're yeah you're proving yourself like, in all a way. the words right um yeah so, i yeah. think that's the most intense thing that people that i uh i mean hearing that gives me anxiety by proxy but like i think people don't realize like you're on a set and behind the camera, there's a whole crew of people that are all staring at you and watching you and yeah. you have to hit your spots and hit your lines and all of these things that people don't like factor into the equation yeah. when they're just watching also, the show. our show costs like $11,000 a minute to shoot or something <laughs> like that. Fucking nuts. And that, that number might actually be like lower. That's great. Um, but still, that's incre- it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it costs a lot of money. So if you think like, oh man, like I mess up <sighs> yeah. and like make it run behind like 10 minutes, like. Oh my God! Uh, yeah. I just cost this production. That, was a, that wasn't there. Goes my college tuition. <laughs> yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. It's gnarly, man. Someone uh, <laughs> just says, "I want to say, hey, he's a very nice man." So <laughs> that's, that's that's not a question. Nope, uh, not a question. <laughs> they didn't participate uh, by the rules here. Yeah, uh, but uh, thank you to whoever that was. Um, someone <clears throat> says, uh, "What's it like to act for so long on the same project?" Uh. Super, super interesting. Like, I go through kind of phases Mm -hmm. um, where I, like, I, you know, I'm, like, super, super grateful and, like, I can't believe this this show has gone on for so long. And then there's other times where, like, I can't believe this show has gone on for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It started when I was a 10 and I'm, you know, going to be turning 21 on the show next season. That's so nuts. uh, It's uh, it's super, like, super awesome. That's, like, the dream as an actor. But it's Mm -hmm. also just, like, I feel so old <laughs> yeah i'm sure yeah. also like you don't really get a say in how <clears throat> your character progresses yeah. and, and grows so at the start of every season you're just given kind of like here's what here's how you are this season yeah exactly which must be kind of nuts to walk in and be like how, what's gonna happen it's kind of been cool yeah I, like i mean we don't even know until like the episode of what's happening right um like they never tell us what like the season arc is and stuff um but it, it was definitely interesting when I was like 14, 15, um, going through puberty and stuff, uh, and kind of like growing up alongside this character mm-hmm. who was also going through the same thing. Right. Uh, except he was just like a jerk. He's just, he's <laughs> yeah. just like, he really, he like, they leaned hard on those like puberty <laughs> jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which I'm sure as someone that's also off camera going through puberty must have been an incredibly awkward experience to be like, so you know, the world gets to watch me go through puberty uh, in a, a quote character sense, but I'm yeah. actually going through this. Yeah, there was, you know, this is, this is, uh, was like a life imitates art, art imitates life thing <laughs> where, um, we were shooting an episode about Luke texting these two girls uh-huh. separately, except they were friends. And his TV sisters like join in and like try to tell him like what to say. Mm-hmm. And uh, as like this this scene cut, they actually were helping me word a text to <laughs> a girl, and like w- like the irony was lost on us, and everyone was like, um, "You did." Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I was gonna and, like, say we didn't, it didn't like <laughs> register to us, but. Well, I was gonna say, and they also they give terrible girl advice. They're so bad. <laughs> I stopped listening to them really quickly. Uh, yeah. Well, I was gonna ask if they have ever pulled anything from your real life and used it in a plot of the show. Uh, they've pl- uh, they pulled banjo. Uh, banjo, oh, really? Banjo. Uh, it's actually gonna be uh, making an appearance in our season finale. I'm gonna play it. Cool. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't. I don't really think so. No. no. But I, I know some people like uh, they've. Uh, and they Eric, find out- Eric is actually a clown. Right, right, uh, right. And uh, it's so weird to say. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like I'm using like using it as like you know like a joke where like I'm in mean, your clown. Yeah. But uh, like he's a clown. Mm-hmm. He's like a like a professionally trained he's clown. He's trained. And they, yeah. Like, they they took that from him. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But then you find out that your final season, you're an actual rock climber. Yeah. And they might use that. That would be cool. Manifest I, it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking, this is our final question, plans for After Modern Family. Is there, I was going to ask, is there uh, like- See previous where I mentioned- <laughs> <laughs> no Rewind plans. this back about 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any sort of character 
or type or something that you haven't played that you'd love to like <clears throat> experiment with? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like you don't get much choice as an actor. Sure. Um, you get what comes to you. But yeah, there's all kinds of things that I would like to do. I want to do like more serious work. Okay. Um, like dramas, because that's actually what I started out doing before Modern Family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I also like this, it's like just like talking about like dr- like a dream role. Yeah. It's just some kind of like bad action movie. I love bad action movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves is my favorite actor. <laughs> Have you met uh, him? I have not met him. Oh, you know, man. you know, like the whole like don't meet your heroes thing. Yeah. Like, I don't want to meet Keanu. Oh, okay. uh, I'm sure he's wonderful. Sure. And that would actually make it worse. But yeah, you want to like, don't be a nice a don't, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just like the like John Wick, like where he literally they kill his dog and so he murders 200 people. <laughs> like that, that's my kind of movie, and I want to I want to be in that. Oh, I think yeah. there's hope. I yeah. think this could happen. Um, Nolan, thank you for making time and being here. Uh, before you go, though, every guest gets a personalized fortune cookie for being on the oh, podcast and spending awesome. time with us. Yeah, I was looking at this. Like, yeah, the it's not time just staring yeah, in the it's face our feng shui. I really wanted having. to eat it because uh, I really love eating things. So I'm just going to actually eat it. Okay. You might have eaten the fortune. Can I actually just eat the fortune? Because, like, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want that to be like the way it goes out. Like, I'm not going to eat the fortune, I'm just going to eat it. <laughs> He's really into, you know, recycling in a weird way. For um for those of you who are at home, I just pulled out the fortune, uh-huh. read it, ate it, uh-huh. and I'm uh, I'm currently working on swallowing it. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I forget what's even on that fortune. Oh my god! It was uh it was pretty it was pretty nice. Yes. Uh, it's not gonna feel so nice uh, later. Yeah, I hope my you don't have anywhere tracks. to go after uh, it, this. It was something about uh, uh, being so young and in the industry and like having oh, like much, much much further to go. Yeah, there you um, go. How wonderful! I know. Or not? I don't know. After like that, it might, <laughs> well, you might really? be like, oh man, like this is all he's got. <laughs> you know, we we really hope that all of our guests, um, you know, take the fortunes to heart, and you uh, truly, literally did that. Yeah, I so, did. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be forever <laughs> part of my DNA now. There's so actually. Th- I think that's the nicest thing I could have done for you guys because you're you. part of me forever. Thank you. There's also gonna an build, emergency like, a care around the somewhere. corner. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bill you guys. Uh, where can people find you on the social media you don't participate on? Um, on Twitter. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know. It's probably Nolan Gold. Mm-hmm. Type it in. Um, <laughs> you're like, I haven't logged in for a, a year. I think so. it's at Nolan underscore Gold. And this is actually, I'm going to get better about posting on that. Okay. Uh, on uh, Facebook, it's Nolan Gould. On um Instagram, it's uh, also at Nolan Gould or at free.nolo to see all, all of my adventures. Cool. Yeah. Thank you again for making time. This was really wonderful. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you sound surprised. By that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes uh, when you're just used to having other people write your words for you, when you're you like, have I to forget that I'm a person. Go say words, it's <laughs> yeah. hard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, you did a great job. Really Thank proud you. of you. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep, not too deep. With Grace Helbig. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by BetterHelp. Whatever struggles you are facing, depression, anxiety, trauma, grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. And best of all, it's affordable. Not Too Deep with Grace Helbig listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So why not get started? Go to betterhelp.com grace. Fill out a questionnaire to get matched with the counselor that you will love today. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and edited by Melissa D. Montz, writing by Diane Kang, production assistance by Katrina Henning, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. (laughs) 